everybody, this is Stephen Dempsey. On One Photo Raw 2019 is finally here, and what an upgrade it is. There are actually so many changes that I decided to just focus on five of my favorites. So let's jump in. These are in no particular order, by the way. Um, number one it has got to be the interface itself. It has been refined and is much more efficient as a result. So if we select a photograph over here, and um, you'll see that uh, instead of having the usual modules that we are used to, which was uh, develop effects, um, the local adjustments was its own, uh, I guess, tab or module, and uh, also the layers. Everything has been co consolidated into uh, one module called edit. So let's click on that and take a look. So instead of the modules, like I said, everything is now tabbed, and they're in tabbed workspaces. And uh, you can easily jump from develop to effects to portrait, which I won't do at the moment. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. And then to local adjustments right here. Uh, it makes the the uh, the experience of working inside of, of uh, on one uh, to be much more efficient, at least for me. Um, one of the other things that I like, if I jump back here to browse, is that each uh, jumping between these workspaces can now be done via keyboard shortcuts. And if you go up to File, you can see the associated keyboard shortcuts for each of these workspaces. So Develop is D, Edit is S, uh, Portrait is I, Edit is uh, Local is A, and then um, Resize is Y. Now, uh, the obvious thing is that it would have been nice to have letters directly um, correlate with the actual name of the tabs, like uh, E for effects, P for portrait. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons why that is not the case. I'm sure that they function for other shortcuts or uh, other functionality within the program. So it's no big deal. You can get used to them pretty fast. But it definitely makes um, going from one space to another to be a lot easier. So one of the other things that I like in the new interface is the consolidation of certain tools. And uh, let me give you an example. So if we go over here, um, we have a new category called Fix. And if I click on that, you can see that there's a, um, a list of different uh, tools within that category up here. And uh, they used to be on this bar here on the left, but now everything is, uh, is a little bit neater, I think. So uh, this is the uh, perfect eraser here, the retouch brush, and the clone stamp that everyone's used to. Uh, the cool thing about this is if you're, if you're inclined to use um, the uh, perfect eraser, for instance, um, the the next time you go to this tool, it'll show that particular icon and you'll be working in it right away when you click over here. If you use the stamp tool, um, you can click on that and then you can see that the icon changes over here. And the next time you go to that tool, the stamp tool will still be there. So it tends to stay on, it, it will stay on the last tool that you use. And if you use one tool, then you don't even have to worry about going up here, but that's a nice touch. Um, the same thing uh, in terms of just consolidating into one category is mask. Um, where before we had the masking brush right here and we had the masking bug and again it all resided here which was getting pretty lengthy. Now if you just click on, on mask um, you've got the brush here and you've got the bug here. Let me just get out of that there. So And the cool thing about this is, again, if you are using the bug, uh, that will be the icon right there. And the next time you go to the mask, it'll be the bug. If you use that, if you're using the brush, it'll be the brush. So you don't always have to go up here if the tool that's, that you use last is the one that you want to use again. So um, just some cool consolidation that I really like. There's many more new touches, like there's a, um, a, a font that's a little bit easier to read. Um, the things get are highlighted rather than blocked out in color. Um, so it's a lot easier and it's it's much more elegant in my opinion. My second favorite thing is how layers have been integrated into the workflow. The experience before felt so clunky and different from the other modules that I rarely use it. Now it's front and center and when combining layers the raw data from each is preserved giving you infinite non-destructive editing options. Here's a quick demonstration of how you can easily combine two layers. So I'm actually going to use this photograph and uh, just a, a funny 
uh, story aside here. Um, I just got my a new camera and I hadn't had time to really check out where all the shortcuts were and the menu items and I could not figure out where the timer was on this. So I had it on a, on a tripod so um, my wife took one photograph, I took the other photograph and we wanted to combine it so that it looked like the two of us were together under this rock here in Utah. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going back out to browse. Now you can add uh, another layer from this workspace here, developing effects here where I was, um, but I'm just going to go back out to browse because I need to do a little bit of uh, adjustments on this second photograph. So here's the one we just looked at, and then on this side um, is the one with me in it. Now uh, this has uh, some uh, adjustments made to it. This is the raw shot with no adjustments, so I just want to sync them. Um, when you're combining shots like this, obviously you want everything to look the same, otherwise uh, uh, you're going to see the difference. I'm just going to select both of these and go down here and uh, sync them. And so what that will do is it'll take all the edits from this photograph and then apply them to this. And as you can see, that's done now. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can go into layers. So we'll just look at one of them at the moment. And that is just literally from the Browse module, you click on Layers here. Now, um, before I click on this, just so it's clear, it is not taking you to a Layers module. That has been done away with completely. Um, what it's going to do is it will take you into the Develop workspace. And it's asking me, uh, so we'll combine the selected photos as a layer stack into a new photo. And that's what I want. Okay, and there we have the two layers stacked together over here. So this, so, oops. So this, uh, this top layer is the one with me in it. And then if I hide that, uh, that's the one with my wife in it underneath. So I'm going to bring this top one back on again. Now, um, each of these layers uh, has its own set of develop tools and its own set of effects tools. So you can um, edit those. There are two, there's still two raw files here. And you can edit uh, each of those uh, layers independent of each other. So if I click on the bottom one, you'll have a whole set of sliders related to that. And at the top one, um, the same thing. So that's just a, a great way to work. Uh, in this case, uh, I really just wanted to punch a hole in this top layer so that my wife will show through here. And um, each of these layers has its own masking, just, just as it does uh, in the effects uh, tools. So um, again, there's just endless opportunities here to use, to blend two um, layers together uh, using masks. So I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to click on the mask icon. And then that will bring up the masking brush that I have here, and it's set to paint out with the minus sign in the middle, and that's what I want to do. I want to paint out on this top layer and reveal what's below. So once I do that, you can see that it reveals what's underneath, and in this case, uh, it, it works perfectly because the two I synced the two photographs, and they have the same um, adjustments made, and it was shot at the same time. So th this one works out quite well. Now. Um, so what happens now is that if I go back to Browse, um, On1 will create a, an, an actual On1 file that will preserve uh, the layers in, in this photograph. So I can go back and I can edit it at any, any time. So we're going to do that. And now we can see there's a photograph over here um, with the extension on photo. So that is now the, it's got all the layer information in there and I can go back into edit or develop and make uh, various changes to, to, to each of those layers. Um, you can also merge the two layers that I used, uh, or three or four, however many you're working with, into a flattened file, and then you, which actually still maintains all the raw information. So you can still bring that back into uh, develop or um, effects to uh, add more adjustments to that. So it's just a it's a great way to work. There's infinite possibilities with layers, and I've only shown you a, a tiny example, but I just wanted to give you an idea as to how easy it is to work with. Okay, my third favorite thing is the addition of three new filters and effects. So let me just click on this photograph for, to demonstrate. So we go into edit again. Well, actually, this time I will go into um, 
I can't remember what the shortcut for effects is, which is S. So if I just hit the S key, that will take me straight into effects. So um, let's go to add filter. Now, not only are there three new uh, filters in the effects uh, workspace, but there's also a new way of browsing. And um, basically, when you mouse over each of these different uh, filters, it'll give you a kind of a split screen of before and after um, to show you what kind of effect they're going to have on a photograph. Now, they can't, it's not set up to do it on your photograph in this case for the previews. That may be something in the future, but at least it gives you a good idea as to what to expect. Now, one of the new effects is, cur or one of the new filters is curves. And although that's not new per se, it's new in, in the effects um, uh, tab. And the reason why this is significant is that before when you applied curves, it was a, a global um, effect for your, uh, for your photograph. You couldn't adjust where you, you place that particular effect. Once it becomes a filter in effects, that means you can use masks and that means that you can selectively apply it. So let me give you an example of that. So if I just do a little bit of adjustment on this photograph and say I just want to affect the lower half with the road. Um, now I've made that adjustment. Before in develop, you were stuck with that, but you couldn't selectively change that. Um, so now if I go to the mask, and I go up here to the masking bug, and click about here, now we can see that uh, all that's being affected is the, uh, the road area and the sky is not affected. So it's pretty subtle. I can actually make it a little bit more exaggerated there, just like that. And maybe bring up the light a tiny bit here. Just want to make the light kind of look dramatic. So that's number one. Um, the second uh, filter that I, I uh, really love having is the... Um, it's the color adjustment. Now we used to have a, or we still do have a color enhancer and part of the color enhancer um, is actually um, the color adjustment. The lower half of the effects on the color enhancer have now been um, ported over to uh, the color adjustment. Now it's still inside the enhancer. That's just wanna make sure that's clear, but they've just made a simplified version of it in the adjustment, which I, it's a lot easier to work with. So if I click on this here, uh, you'll see that basically what we can do is we can adjust the range, meaning the uh, amount of that particular color um, inside the photograph, the hue, the saturation, brightness of any of these colors here. And I'm going to choose the green um, because there's a lot of grass in this shot. So I'm going to um, expand the range so that it, it gets all the different shades of green and we'll pump up the uh, saturation here and we'll also pump up the brightness just so you can get an idea of how that's being affected. Now, this is before and after, so you can see that it's pretty dramatic and it's only affecting the green, so that's pretty cool. So the third and final new filter is the uh, film grain. And I just love this because it gives a kind of an organic feel to your photograph. Now, in order to see this effect, you really need to bring it up to 100% in the view because the grains um, and the density of the grains is going to be something you won't see in a smaller preview. So uh, you have different uh, levels of grain that you can add, and I like the uh, Ilford XP2 Super 400, and you can, the amount will definitely make it denser, or at least it'll make it more obvious, and you can make it more subtle as you go down in the amount. And then the size, the larger the size, the, the more, grain you've got basically and you can make it more subtle by going down the size so I'll just leave it like about there so that's when you look at it from the preview standpoint you're not necessarily going to see the exact effect it's having which is why I recommend that you do that at 100 percent so uh, number four uh, for me in terms of my favorite changes is uh, the local adjustment panel. So if I click on that over here and it is working directly with the raw information, um, meaning that you will be able to um, uh, preserve more of the highlights and shadows in your adjustments and you can target them because you can mask this stuff. And so it's really, uh, it's really fabulous actually. So um, if I 
just let's say I'm going to show you a little demonstration and go up here and do the local gradient here click it about here and so everything above the road is being affected here so I can bring the whites up just watching my just watching my histogram here and bring down some blacks and adjust the contrast. What's what's new about this is also is the whites were not there before and blacks were not there before and also I believe the haze is new also. So I like how that looks. Um, I probably just finished this off with a vignette and just add a vignette here. And I'll go for the strong and that's definitely a little bit much so I'll go to my masking brush and I want to bring this down to about 65 or so. Go to the bug. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some of the the, uh, the intensity of the vignette from the bottom of the photograph. Now um, I'll have to switch it here because it's, it's applied it the wrong way. So I just hit invert here. And so what that does is it just takes some of the intensity off because I've got it at 65% there. So if I just click off that, you can see that this is the before and this is the after. So it makes it much more dramatic. This is, is probably way more than I would normally do. I just wanted to give you an idea as to the power of the local adjustments tool. Okay, and so finally, um, the text tool is also a welcome addition. I've done another tutorial on that using, uh, using it to create a, a copyright um, or watermark preset. You can check that out in uh, my other tutorial. Um, and so you just click on that, it makes it very easy. Now, um, the, uh, the text size will be remembered from the previous time that you used it. So um, in this case, I'm going to copy it and all right, I'm going to highlight it and make it 200. Actually, I'll make it larger. You can, it, 200 is the, is the most you can go um, with the preset numbers there, but you can make it what you want. And just make it 1,000. So you can see how big that is there. So you can change the font size, the, the, um, the color, You can change whether it's bold, italics, or underline. And then this little icon here will allow you to change the opacity like that. It's not going to be as sophisticated as what you can get in Photoshop. Um, you can't easily apply uh, drop shadow and things like that. But for 70% of, of the things that I need, it's definitely adequate. It certainly saves me from going into Photoshop or uh, Affinity Photo, which I generally do just to add some text. So um, it, it's, it's a welcome start to, to uh, what I hope will become a more sophisticated tool. There are so many other major additions to 2019, and I've only really scratched the surface. I'm excited to try focus stacking for, for landscape images and also being able to layer HDR photographs. Uh, it just gives me endless creative control over my images. This is a major update, and I have to say that now that I've been using the new workflow, it would be very hard to go back to the previous version. Watch out for more videos looking at other new features in version 2019 over the next few weeks. If you enjoy this video, please like it below. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you are finding these videos useful. Until next time, thanks for watching.